Hi, good afternoon. This is Mr. Mark at Southwest Career College. Hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to talk about patient billing and we're going to talk about South Southwest Career College famous billing program which is Practice Suite. First you're going to go to Safari. Safari is going to go to Google and once you're in Google or if you use uh, Boxfire or any others, what you're going to do is you're going to put up there Practice Suite. For those that know how to spell it, Great. If you don't know how to spell it, ask your teacher, but it should be up there for you. Okay. Now, once you have Practice Suite up here, see, it says practicesuite.com. Okay. Step by step transitions. Don't worry about that. Don't look at this. Okay. This is just for somebody else to buy it. We already have it at the school. We're not going to buy it again. So you're just going to go to the right, this right, not this other right, this right over here. And you're going to log in. Log in. Once you log in, this is the important part. Remember to take the cap locks off of your keyboard no cap locks and what we're going to do is we're going to log in all logins are different and your teacher will tell you your secret code for your class everybody has a secret code okay secret handshake also so be be careful with that okay one okay and when you have a, you will have one capital letter at the beginning of your password okay and once you have that capital in then you take the rest off and then the bottom will be SWC, Southwest Career College. You're going to go to the secure login. And once you're at the secure login, you're going to have this nice screen. It's going to say practice name, code, and address. Now, what we're going to do is going to be using the internal medicine practice, okay? None of this OBGYN and pediatric. And you say, why don't we use the OBGYN or pediatric? The reason is because most of you We'll be working with internal medicine doctors. I'm not saying you won't be working with OBGYN, but in using this program, once you learn the first one, they're all pretty much similar. So that's why we stick with the internal medicine practice suite portion. So we're going to go to connect, click the left side of your mouse, and it'll take you to this larger screen. Now on this screen, you're going to have on the left-hand side, you're going to have scheduler, search patients, EMR, billing, and billing setup. Now what I wanted to explain to you right now at this point is that most of the time when you go to a doctor you already have a clipboard with the information the patient came in with you now that's already the information of a new patient get telling you date of birth their name their address phone number and any allergies they may have now also this practice suite is being used nationwide right now as we speak live by hospitals and clinics and home health agencies around the country in fact there's several hospitals and clinics in el paso that use it right now so what we're going to do is we're going to go to search, we're going to go to scheduler above the search patient. You click that once and automatically you're going to have the appointment scheduler. Now if you look on the ha left hand side it's going to say the provider and you can choose from here which doctor you're going to see. In this case we're going to put all providers for our clinic. Right now we're going to put the duration of this first patient is going to be 15 minutes. The day they're going to be is obviously the day of today and they're only going to see them for this one day unless there was something in change. We're also going to have a start time that we only see the patients from 8 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. Now this you have to be careful with because it's a very important thing because if you schedule patients after the, the time of 5 o'clock, if you schedule for 7 o'clock, obviously you're going to be closed and they're going to be upset and that's not going to be good. So make sure you have 8 to 5 or whatever you're open, 9 to 6, whatever it's open on that day. Now, on the day over here, you're going to come and put whatever time is available. Now, one thing you have to remember, don't ask the patient, what time would you like to come? No, you shall. You tell the patient what time is available. They say, well, we can only see you at 10.30 or 10.15. Okay, so you, sketch, you click on 10.30, and that will pop up your window. And on this window, you are going to see... We're going to see a patient. We're not seeing a patient. Sometimes you have those little glitches there. But remember, it is a live program. Okay. okay, let's try another one. Let's try over here. Oh, this time we came over. Yay, all right. So, sometimes you might have to click a couple of times. That is a glitch in the program because it is live on the internet. And like I said, there are thousands of different medical facilities using this program right now. Now the important thing is because it is a new patient that we're going to be working with, you want to click the new patient box. 
Okay, so we're going to make sure that that box is clicked. If you do not click this box at the beginning, you're going to have to re-input everything once you finish. Now, the first thing you want to do is following, like, like I said, if you have a folder, a clipboard of a new patient, obviously you're going to put the last name. So, your teacher will probably give you a patient to enter. It may ask you to put in your own uh, information. Now, what I suggest is just put your real name, the rest you can make up. So, in this case, I'm going to make up a patient. And then you can tab over or you can use the mouse to get to your next name. And come in here, you can put the, either the middle name, whatever. Make sure that you put all the digits of a social security. Find your social security number, add them up. There is three, then two, and then there's uh, four more. So make sure you have that there. Also, make sure when you have the date of birth. Make sure that you just click on the right-hand side of the date of birth box and put that down as your date of birth. Make sure you choose a gender. Make sure it is your own gender or if it is a female. Don't be playing around. Make sure if it's female, put female and not male. And then on the phone number, what we're going to do is we're going to put down the area code. Very essential because if you don't put the area code, they're going to kick it back to you and say there is a digit missing. Also on your email, you have to complete the email because the computer is particular that because you do need an email address for taking care of seeing the patient later on. Make sure you put in all the information, whether it's Yahoo, AOL, whatever it is, in regard to the email address. Now coming down to the next box, schedule options. Now schedule options, what you want to do is obviously you have to make sure that you have confirmed the visit. You do have a visit and it is confirmed. Now you're going to the right hand side schedule type. You have an appointment. Now in this case, since it's a new patient, you're going to open up the box and click on new patient. Right after clicking new patient, you're going to see the time, 1245 p.m., whatever time it is that you have scheduled the patient for, and you're going to put down the reason for seeing that patient. Okay, in this case, we're going to say the patient had headaches. Okay, and if you put in headache, you're going to see headache and a broken bone or headaches with nausea and vomiting. In this case, we're going to put headaches, nausea, vomiting, sensitive to light. Okay, obviously they might have rabies. No, they don't have rabies. Okay, but they obviously have something wrong with them. That's why they're here at the doctor. Now, we're going to put in sign-in sheet. The sign-in sheet is very important, obviously, because this is going to kick it back to the electronic medical record that you have signed in electronically into the sheet. And the super bill, you have to click that box also because that's going to help you in billing, which will be on a further tutorial down the line on our patient billing and practice suite. But we're not going to cover super billing today. We're just going to cover the actual putting in the new patient to see the doctor for today. So once we've finished name and other information, our scheduling options, we're going to go down to billing information. Under the billing information, your teacher Oh, and then we all, oh, the label. Yes, you have a label. Now, once you have the patient uh, established, you can, if you're working at a doctor's office that likes to use labels, like let's say, for example, like a hospital or wristband, whatever, you can put that in there and make your label and put it on the patient. So you have to okay that for there also. So in billing information, we're going to put the insurance company name. So let's say your, your teacher has told you we're going to use uh, blue cross and blue shield. What you're going to go is going to blue box. Click on the blue box with your left hand of the mouse. And all you got to do is up here on the search for insurance, you're just going to click the letter B and go all the way to the right and click on search. When you click on search, all the letters in with B of different insurance are going to come up. And we're going to find our blue cross blue shield. Click on that and it will come up and it will bring it back to here. And now you'll have your Insurance. Now going to the right, you have plan name. Obviously, again, it's going to be Blue Cross Blue Shield. You don't have to click Blue Cross Blue Shield. All you got to do is click the box. It will come to the box again. Blue Cross will be there. It'll come down. Now, remember, when it says insured name, that is the person that has the insurance, not necessarily the patient. If, for example, the person being seen as the patient is the, the daughter, the son, the wife, or the husband, and it is the spouse that has the insurance, in this box is going to be the name of the spouse, not the patient. But in this case, this patient is also the holder of the insurance. So we're going to put in here, we're going to put in Salazar. 
Quintama, and then Javier. Once you have that, we have we go back to our member number. Now this, unless your teacher chooses a member number for you to input, you can make up your own. Anywhere from three digits up to about 15 digits would be, would be good. Then the group ID also will be essential. Under group ID. Remember that in a member number, if you do not have a member number on the insurance, you will use the social security of the patient. It is always the social security of the patient. After you have all this information, you will hit save Make sure everything is complete because if you don't have it complete, the computer is going to tell you that something is an error. Okay. In this case, what we have is please enter valid information in the highlighted fields. So the computer is asking for a phone number. We have a phone number here. I guess it's asking for a valid area code. So we're going to put 915 here and click it again, see if it works this time. And this time it did. Okay, so make sure your phone number has a, a legitimate area code. Now we're back to our appointment scheduling. Once you're back to your patient, you will go to your screen where you have your patient and you will notice immediately on the left-hand side, you will have the patient's name, their date of birth, the exam room they will be seeing, in this case, exam room one. It'll give the reason why they're seeing the doctor. Headaches, nausea, vomiting, sensitivity to light. A 15-minute visit, and it is a new patient. What you're going to do is going to check in at this time. And notice that when right now you are green. Once you check in, you will turn purple, which means you are checked in. You are there to see the doctor. Once we have finished this screen, you're going to log out of it. In your case, it'll probably be on the right-hand side over here. But in this case, I'm just going to go up here and close it. And you're going to be back to your schedule, search patients, EMR, billing, and billing setup. On the practice suite on the left-hand column, you're going to go EMR. For those that don't know what EMR is, it is electronic medical record. That is what the three initials stand for. You click on it once, and it'll have the drop boxes of EMR administration, connect to lab, and clinical desktop. What we want to do is connect to the clinical desktop. Once you click left one time, you will see your, all the different patients coming up. You will find your patient. Do not click on the patient's name, but click on the time they are scheduled to see the doctor. Click once, and it should come up with their electronic medical record. Now remember what I said before. Everyone has gone to the doctor. They have to fill out that little clipboard with their name, address, and phone number, and all those good things. What we're going to do today is just cover allergies. Allergies are very important because it's a life death situation. You might have somebody that has an allergy to peanuts or whatever it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the right-hand side where the plus sign is. Click on it once, and you should have the drop box come up. And like I said before, let's say this patient is allergic to peanuts. You will type in peanuts. And the computer will be working, trying to find something for you. Sometimes it won't come up, but most of the time it will. And then you will put either peanut or peanut oil. In this case, we'll put peanut. And this code is your ICD-9 code, 992. Okay. And for those that have not taken their two-hour class, uh, you can ask your teacher to explain what the ICD-9 CPT codes are. We're not going to be involved in those different portions of the billing at this time. We're going to be doing electronic billing, but later on we do the two-hour class, so we'll get more into the ICD-9 CPT codes. Now on the type, you're going to go to the drop box because it is peanut. We're going to go that it is food intolerance or food allergy. In this case, I would put food allergy because a lot of times people don't even know that there might be peanut oil or something in it, so it's a food allergy. And we're going to put is active. The reason we leave it active is because this is something they have all their life. You may not be there for the doctor for this reason, because obviously they're there for headaches and vomiting and all this other stuff. But they do have this allergy all the time. Okay, so the reaction at this time is you can put in as none, because they're not showing any symptoms. And any additional comments, you can put, you can put in there if you'd like um, uh, a family. family allergy if you'd like. Maybe everybody in their family is suffering 
you. So this might be very important in the future to find this out. Now you're going to go all the way across, and we're going to say, you may ask your patient, what's the last time you had an outbreak from your, from your, uh, from your peanut allergy? And they say, well, it was last month. Okay, so you more or less approximate. So you go to your Dropbox, say, okay, it was in August. Yeah, it was August. When was it in August? Oh, I don't know, around the 15th. So you say around, okay, around the 15th, click on the 15th, and it should come up with a date. And what is the reaction status? You can put all clear. You can put clear, no signs, or you can put SYM for no symptoms. And now this is very important, very crucial. You want to put show as red because remember, allergies of any kind can be very deadly, if not very severe to the point where they could be hospitalized. So make sure it's in red that you click the red box, show as red. And when you click save, you're going to see it's going to come back as allergies in red. It's going to show that it's active all the time. Okay, and Like I said before, maybe they're allergic to penicillin. Or maybe they're allergic to coding. Any of these things could kill the patient. And obviously, you don't want to do that because you could lose your job. Okay. Now, we have also on the bottom, you have your current chart. You have your visiting, which is a consultation diagnosis, which we'll get in later and a schedule, what other, other things we may have to schedule, like maybe you have to go to do some other, like an MRI, or maybe the just doctor's orders that we'll have to do on record for you at this time. And maybe we'll have to go to the lab. Maybe we'll have to do some blood work, okay? Right now, nothing is ordered. Now, all of these, all of these different tabs, you'll have to pull up once your, uh, your patient has been asked, requested by the physician, okay? You have your flow sheet. Which is going to tell you about blood pressure, everything else, pregnancy weight if the, if the patient is pregnant, uh, preterm labor, any of that, urine, urine any weekly uh, gestations. Uh, specialty is the tab where, you know, maybe it's a growth uh, thing. Maybe you're dealing with a small child. Maybe they're, they're slow in developing. This is the chart. This is the different tab that you will use for that. And for alerts, obviously alerts, alert box will give you, like I said before, Maybe it's in regard to coffee or anything else that may, they may be allergic to. Whoa, what happened here? Where did we go? Okay. And now we have a document management, and then we have our face sheet. Now, on face sheet, this is where we're coming back. The face sheet is obviously where you're putting in all the information in regard to allergies, medications, family history. And problem list, maybe they are uh, also high blood pressure, whatever it is, and any surgical procedures, vaccination. And this I'll get into in our next meeting in regard to practice suite. But right now, I just wanted to get, give you a feel of what to put in and the basic information of that first visit with the doctor. And once you have the basic information here, you're going to go to the right, and you're going to click out of it in the red box, which will take you back to your practice suite, your scheduler. And from here, you're going to log out. Do not just close it. Log out because you're live on the internet. Remember that. Log out. And then you're going to have to log out again because you're still logged into the program. You're still in the, at the very beginning of the program here. Log out again. And there you'll be. And I'll say thank you for using practice suite. Now, I'm Mr. Marcus, your Southwest Career College billing teacher. And I'd like to remind you that if you have any questions, Go to SWCC IT Department channel on YouTube and stay tuned for more Practice Suite um, tutorials that will be coming down in the future. And if you have any questions, just uh, email me there. And uh, I hope I answered all your questions in starting Practice Suite for you. And uh, just uh, have a great day and enjoy yourselves. And welcome to Southwest Career College.